How you doing? Hi everybody and welcome back to the Educate Call the Shop Channel. We're going to be doing a review of the November series Spotlight cards. Da -da -da -da. Let's get started. Alright, so here we have the November Spotlight tier list. First off, we have the ratings. That hasn't really changed. It goes from S to D. S no brainer, A pretty good, B are solid if you like the card. So S to B is usually where I would stick between. C, I don't really recommend unless you have a reason for it. Maybe the spotlights are really good or anything like that. And D is generally just kind of a void, or if you're a player that focuses on spotlights. So generally S to B is where I would particularly go. You could see, on the right side, we have the spotlights, and then usually I also have the variants as well. So you can kind of see, I also have the series of the cards. So you can kind of figure out you know, what series the card is and see if that influences your decision making. I would say in general, you want to spend your tokens on series four cards and you want to try to get your series five cards through the spotlights in any way. If you can't get them or can't afford it, then yeah, you could spend your tokens on series five cards, but like optimally, if you know, best case scenario, you can spend your, your tokens on series four, you're usually getting a two for one, two cards for 6,000, right? So that's generally better. So the first one, right? Usually the first one of the month is, has one old card, well, three old cards instead of a new card and two old cards. So usually there's more permutations. So those ones are going to have more options. And for this one, it's a Lyoth. Now, a Lyoth used to be Omega Broken. Now it got nerfed. I would still say a Lyoth is still very meta relevant. That's really the main importance in whether it has a lot of value, whether the card is meta relevant, you see it in the meta, or if it's a card that's pretty niche, you only really see it in specific decks. Things like that. I would say Eliath is pretty mega relevant still. So even though it got nerfed, it's still a card that you want to be picking up if you can. So generally, first couple, if you're missing all three cards, still say B tier. It's not super, super premium, right? The card is a little bit worse than it was before, but it's still very relevant. And the Null Negus, um, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, those cards are both good if you want to play those decks. If you like those cards, you want to play Destroy deck, you want to play like a Control Negasonic deck. I still think these cards are pretty good. However, they are Series 4, which means they're going to drop a little bit lower in priority since you can just get both of these cards through the token shop and, and generally be pretty okay. Another thing is Null is a pretty old card, so a lot of players do already have Null. I wouldn't necessarily say that that lowers its value per se, because if you're looking at it right, you're you're gonna not have null or, or have null, right? So if you don't have null, then you'll look if you have null, da da da. Right. But it's usually better as a holistic to have newer cards since less people will have them. But it doesn't really matter too much in these ratings since you know that's not that's not important in how I rate these, right? But it's it's still interesting, right? Null's been this is like the third or fourth null appearance. So it's a card a lot of people would have picked up in a previous rotation. But generally, if you're missing Eliath, I would say this is an okay spotlight to go for. If you're not missing Eliath, then I would say this is not really relevant. If you need null, if you need Negasonic, just get it through the token shop. That would be my advice. I wouldn't spend a spotlight or multiple spotlights just to get Negasonic. Which was something I was, I was considering. Right? I thought this was an interesting spotlight because I assumed they were going to buff Negasonic. They did, but now when I look at it, I was like, I still want to just get Negasonic through the spotlight through the uh, token system. So definitely my thoughts on this particular one here. And then we always have the V tier if you're missing nothing and you just want the variants. Next up, we have Gladiator Mirage Loki. I would say this one is generally okay, right? Loki might get adjusted, right, in in a while. But for now, right, Loki's still pretty high meta presence. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best performing card. Right now, I think people have adjusted even with Loki not having, like, a real counter. There's just definitely enough things to play that are doing okay. So Loki isn't like you have to play this or lose, but 
it's still an annoying card and it's still something that you might want to be picking up. So I would say if you're missing Gladiator, whichever one is, and you want Loki, this is a good time to get it. I want to mention that Loki is also going to be in a spotlight in January with Elsa. So if you are missing Elsa, you don't want to, you didn't get the pass or anything like that, then you might want to consider waiting to get Loki Elsa in the same spotlight. Now, the issue I generally have with waiting is that you're going to be waiting a long time, right? It's in January, which is two plus months away. It's January 24th, right? So it's about two, three months, two and a half, three months away. And I really just think the meta is going to be very different in two and a half to three months. So by the time Loki rolls around again, it just might not be relevant. It just might not be a card you would even consider. So when you're thinking you're planning, right? You're like, okay, if I just wait two and a half months to get Loki, right? The meta could be very different. Your priorities of cards that you want could be very different in two and a half months. So usually if you want Loki, I would just say, just get it in the spotlight now. And then two and a half months, then maybe you can reevaluate and say, oh, maybe I would have wanted to wait, but very likely that's not going to be the case. So um, if you do want Loki, this is a good time in my opinion to pick it up. So definitely you can get it with Garage, uh, with Mar get it with Gladiator. Mirage in particular, I'm not a big fan of. I just think pretty much anytime you could play Mirage, you could just play Sentinel. So I just have a very low priority of Mirage. I know there's going to be some Mirage players that are like, Mirage is way better than Sentinel. It has these win conditions, these win options that Sentinel does not do. However, like this is a spotlight. So these aren't, these aren't really very easy to get. So if there's just like this available replacement that you can realistically use and do okay with, it's like, why would I heavy prioritize this alternative card? So, you, you know, here you can get Mirage. If you're missing Mirage, this is, this is like one of their best times to just squeeze in a Mirage pickup without too much difficulty. But if you're like really shooting for a Mirage, I, I, I'm not like the biggest fan of doing that with your spotlight, so. That's my overall thoughts on it. And then Gladiator by itself, i not sure. Like this could end up being like a C tier rating. But for me, I just don't know if I would want to spend all my resources on just Gladiator by itself. Like it being next to Loki is really what jumps up um, this particular Swallight cash section for me. So that's my thoughts on that in particular. Now the next one, the next spotlight is, in my opinion, the quintessential like great spotlight. The quintessential like, who this is thumbs up, check marks on all counts for me. You've got three cards, three series five cards that are all meta relevant. I think that is exactly what you want to be looking for. I think Annihilus is, in my opinion, one of the most relevant new cards in this month to come out and it's next to Dakin. it's next to x23 which i think are both fantastic cards that fit in their own niches can be used in multiple decks but realistically Dakin is played in destroy and x23 is played in Dakin is played in what's that card discard and x23 is played in destroy right like those it could you can play x23 and discard but who does that you can play Dakin and destroy i have seen Dakin and destroy so that's that's less like weird but mostly i see most people playing Dakin and discard so they're strong cards very flexible you see them a lot good win rates good stats just a perfect spotlight if you're missing all three absolutely get this if you're missing two still get this like i still think this is great annihilus is a is a card i think you will see play in in this week right and moving forward and it's a it's a card that just can make a new archetype by itself right like that's another like at least criteria for me for very for cards that you want to have in your collection cards that by itself can make new archetypes and a nihilus is a card that does that if you don't have a nihilus and you do you're good there's going to be a deck you can't play most likely so 
that's generally you know a card i really value a card i think is strong so this fits all the check marks for me this is a spot I, I would say for sure pick up if you can also think the variants aren't bad if you're missing if you already have like dac or anything i think the variants aren't too bad i do think um to be fair i do think this one is better like i like the loki variant. i like the mirage variant. you know gladiator i don't know yet but you know but generally this is a pretty good small white for sure now i have um at the bottom c plus for annihilus now this one is because i can't see the future unfortunately or fortunately depending on you know your thoughts on those but i don't exactly know what the meta is going to look like during this week and if annihilus is very heavy meta presence then you will probably want this to kind of defend against the other annihilus players right you might want to have this to deal with junk and whatever right so depending on how much you're seeing this card you might just want to pick it up just to have a, a means to fight it so or at least the option of like playing it and seeing because sometimes by playing a deck you can see the weaknesses right so by playing it you buy like, oh this this has an issue that i didn't know when i wasn't playing into it so or playing with it so it's nice to pick it up depending on the meta if it just falls flat and people just play I don't know, carnage or something and destroy all your junk your junk strategies that hey maybe it's not that important to pick up but if it's still like really powerful that you might want to pick it up so that's that's why there's a little bit of a caveat here i think it's a little better than c tier and then the next spotlight is the quintessential opposite this in my opinion is the definition of a very bad spotlight <laughs> yeah we had the very good one this one i think is very bad you've got three cards all not meta relevant that are series four only one being series five is gene gray however a lot of people have gene gray since it was the very first spotlight people were hyped to use their spotlights on the first one which included gene gray and null and the other one um the living tribunal right so a lot of people have gene gray and then the ones that's next to are just cards that i don't think are going to see that much play martyr honestly think was better as a two six than as a one four it's not that enticing to me there's a lot of cards already that have one four stat lines in like w when you include their ability nico is a one four in a lot of cases or better like or better in so many scenarios is better than one four um you know, there's a lot of others. Hawkeye, though no one's playing Hawkeye unless you're playing in bounds. But, you know, there are one four stat lines without this I kill myself or I will lose you the game downside. So unless you're playing like a zoo deck, which might see more play with some of the new cards added. But unless you're playing that type of deck list, this isn't a card that like jumps out. Maybe it was a one five. If it was a one five, then, then that's a lot better. Like that's a Titania stat line, which is a good card. But a, a reasonable downside that you have to think about. So one four star line, not not in love with. And then Spider-Man 2099 is just not very good, honestly. Especially with people playing lots of cards since there's like no huge doubt. There's no counterplay to playing tons of cards if you're playing bounce or if you're playing any any cost reduction decks. Like Spider-Man 2099 can hit a one drop, can a two drop. Like it's not that good of a card. It it requires so much setup too. So it's just not a not a great card. Definitely could use some love. And then Jean Grey is a little bit iffy as well. Um, you know, maybe could also use some like these these are cards I think could all use some buffs, honestly. So it's like in terms of a spotlight criteria, they're very low priority. These are not cards you would be excited to get if if any of these cards were in other spotlights they'd be the worst card of the list right and they're all together <laughs> so it's it's so hard to feel excited for this it's also a very cheap spotlight 1200 tokens right two series four so there's really nothing in my opinion you have going for it unless you like the variants even the variants not in love with right the the original gene gray variant uh spotlight variant was in my opinion, better than Spider-Man 2099. You know, so there's really nothing 
I have too much of a plus. I would say this is one of the worst spot lights we've seen. Now, there's probably someone who loves this option. They're missing all their cards. They're like, Colin, come on, give me something. <laughs> give me something. Well, Martyr's newest, right? So maybe it's good, right? That's that's fair. That's possible. I don't have a lot of high hopes for the card, but at least in its current state. But it could definitely be like, hey, you just play Zoo with this. It's just a good final piece. It's a 1-5 with Zoo, right? With Kazar. Like, sure. And Blue Marvel. It's a 1-6. Like, that's fair, right? But... But generally, not uh, not in love with this particular selection of cards. So definitely the one I would be jumping out for is the Annihilus Spotlight. Everything else I would say is pretty iffy. Everything is more depending on your particular preference, whether you like these cards or, or not, right? But yeah, I would just just save, you know, three or four for the Annihilus weak and then the rest you could either not use or use particularly for what you want so that's that's my thoughts on this particular week set of cards they're not too bad in terms of the cards themselves right like um gladiator i think is okay uh, Eliath, there's not new there's only three right annihilus is i think potentially toxic right but i have to see because i do think there's counterplay but potentially it's toxic, so we'll have to see like how much people would lean into the toxic part of the gameplay of, or if it's just like a tech, uh, a tempo card. Maybe people play with Century, something like that. And then Martyr, you know, it loses you the game. I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know what I had to tell you here, but yeah, definitely an interesting one. But yeah, overall, that's my thoughts on this week. So hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Educated Colin to snap Once you watch him You won't go back He'll teach you to marvel snap Your skills will be I promise I will change this Later Like next video I'm gonna change it <laughs> That's the That's what I'll say 